मैडम चालू किया Good evening, everyone. On behalf of WIRC, uh, myself, C. H. Vata Jain, Secretary, I welcome you all on this multidisciplinary partnership guideline. And for that, we have none other than our ex Central Council member, C. H. Srinivas Joshi, sir. I recognize the presence of uh, Chairman WIRC, Murtaza Kachwala, sir, and Regional Council member, Rudesh Pankhania. So before formally start the session, I request everyone to put your uh, hand on or your heart for ICI motto. Kamam 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 sho sho nirvimana nirvimana adeva shukram adeva shukra dhamma dhamma adeva amrita mucheva amrita mucheve tasmin loka tasmin loka. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So when last year it has been announced that now chartered accountant can hand, uh, can join hands with other accounting bodies or other professionals. So now everybody is eager to learn and to know more about this. So uh, today, keeping this in mind, we have organized this program. But uh, going uh, move, uh, before moving further, I request to our chairman, WRC, uh, to please address uh, to the participants. Thank you, Shweta. At the outset, let me uh, welcome. Sir, you are on mute. Chairman, sir, you are on mute. Yeah. Uh, at the outset, let me uh, welcome and thank past Central Council member C. H. Shriniwas Joshi, sir. Sir, extremely, extremely grateful. And uh, thank you for accepting our invitation and joining us today for uh, sharing your valuable knowledge with all the participants, sir. Uh, I also uh, thank uh, WRC Secretary Shweta Jain and Regional Council Member Rudesh for joining in. Uh, friends, uh, the practice areas are widening and there are so many chat accountants whom we meet and they keep on discussing how do they network together, work together. And uh, maybe two or three friends, people who know, it, know each other, they connect and they start forming network or partnership together. And everyone started finally like specializing. Someone said okay, like all the direct tax class will be handled by one partner, GST by another partner, and maybe the audit by the third partner. And similarly, when the firms grew, and it become bigger by either merger or network or whatever, they could even have the bandwidth to go for larger assignments. But now with the RERA Act coming into play, where like 
it's not only chartered accountant but an architect is also required and an advocate or a lawyer is also required similarly when we talk about insolvency and bankruptcy again there are different type of professionals who are required and i think considering the whole uh, environment the economy in which we are operating and the growth which is happening tremendous amount of growth i see i have come up with this multidisciplinary partnership where like we can add or we can even enter into partnership with other professionals and uh, here we are today again on the basis of request from various members we thought ke like let us do a program where we can like everyone can understand in detail what are these guidelines what does it mean and how it can be done practically and uh, joshi sir was involved i think in the drafting also and he is like an expert and uh, i'm sure it will be a treat to listen to him and i will request everyone encourage all whatever questions also you can ask and get the clarification so with that happy learning to everyone and over to you shweta thank you thank you uh, thank you so much chairman sir so without taking much time but before handing over charge to uh, shrinivas joshi sir i would request to our uh, regional council member rudesh pankania to please uh, brief uh, please give us a brief introduction sure thank you so much ma'am thank you so much murtaza kachola sir the chairman of wic shweta ma'am secretary wic uh, thank you very much shrinivas sir for accepting the invitation to be a faculty to be talking about shrinivas sir a partner in cvk and associates who's been into practice over 40 years he is a chartered accountant and a company secretary since 1980 an elected member of central council of the institute of chartered accountants of india from the year 2013 till 2022 sir has also been the chairman of wrc for the year 2011 12 and the regional council member for three terms from 2004 to 2013 he has been a chairman and a vice chairman of various committees across in the institute he has also been a speaker at various seminars for chartered accountants at wrc and branches of subjects of accounting standards auditing standards company law udin ethical standards career counseling how to face ca exams for the past 25 years we are very glad to have you sir so requesting shrinivas sir to take it forward uh thank you murtaza kachwala to start with chairman wrc who invited me for giving personal call uh, i think that may be a new practice by chairman to call ccms not ccms or vice president president but also the past ccms maybe it's a good practice to give some credit for the work done i also thank uh, shweta jain to uh, have started a session well and uh, also rudresh Uh, uh to give the proper introduction uh coming to the subject proper friends uh multidisciplinary partnership was thought about by institute for a long time i was central council member for two terms uh and uh, involved in this particular exercise of uh, having this document created uh, which was actually issued by the institute in july 21 uh but uh, this particular thing that what is the if you see the current scenario of the profession as the chairman spoke and shweta jain spoke secretary uh, you know about more than 70% of our practitioners are proprietors and they are fi- uh, the institute uh, has seen that we all the elected members come from the masses and we know the problems of these proprietors uh, that uh, or even a small firm let us say of two or three partners where they have a problem of first getting a good staff they also have the low updation time they can't update themselves because they are so busy in their own work uh, uh, because they have to write from filing to uh, managing administratively their offices they have to do them, themselves the job their fees are low because they are only into filing and not into higher level practice as chairman mentioned you know the actually what will happen is only the consultancy practice uh will uh, uh, will get you the money and if consultancy practice this consultancy practice will require expertise and if you don't have time to update or if you don't have uh, enough staff uh, to support you it's very difficult to go into consultancy practice at all now coming to this that therefore all these proprietors what they are doing they are confined to audit and taxation that is what institute found and then uh, they are also in the bank audits which are nothing but 
you you are you are registered with the institute and a panel and you feel that a bank audit will support you now they, they they will not be able to explore the newer areas because of as i say because of the time constraint because of the staff constraint and they are into these three areas only audit taxation maybe bank audits now many of the clients which these proprietors will have when they grow they would shift they would shift to larger firms and therefore there will be further erosion of good clients or good money that they would get now in this particular scenario of our institute having so many members as either proprietor or small uh, partnerships uh, the capacity building measures thought about by the institute they were thought about for many many years right from 2004 onwards uh, we are uh, hearing various things on from the institute saying that capacity building measures are required and whatever was done now if you see uh, the thinking that is that goes into this if you see we start with a associate when we want to grow as a practitioner we start with an associate and we refer there is a work referral so suppose i i'm i'm into gst and income tax and someone else is expert in uh, some uh, other area say international tax so when the work comes i'll just refer it to him and ask him to do on my behalf and share the fees so He, that person is called associate so we have associates who would do our work and that is how we can increase our work size by because we have associate who support us in the work now the next stage is networking if you see 9th february 21 guidelines of the institute on networking which are recent the original guidelines were of 2011 now they were updated on 9th february 2021 Under the guidance of uh, Jai Chairaji, who was our Senate Council member for nine years, uh, he has done tremendous work on this networking, uh, and uh, you must have heard his speeches on networking, etc. Now, this networking, what was thought of? This is beyond the associates or association uh, uh, for referral work or referred work. Now, here the networking is where the firms who are in the network or the proprietors they are sharing common brand name. or they are sharing common system of quality control or they are sharing the professional resources that they have so they can exchange the staff including the partners or the which cas in office etc between them they are also having profit or loss sharing uh, agreements and they may have even common it infrastructure if any one of this or many of this come to uh, are taken together they that is called a network so those Uh, proprietors or those uh, firms which are using all this together like a brand name and system of quality control or infrastructure or professional resources etc in addition to sharing profit loss would be called a network now this network concept was given by the institute with the lead firm concept also that in the network which is a lead firm because if you are suppose want to do a particular work suppose of a Uh, 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 of consultancy nature, or say suppose you want to go for some uh, better work, like as I say, international tax, or you can go on due diligence, or you want to go for valuation. There will be a lead firm for that kind of work. So in the in the network, it was allowed that firm A will be lead for this work, firm B will be suppose there is a, a tribunal to be done in income tax. There is another firm which is expert in that would lead that particular discussion and a particular work. like that so the lead firm concept was first time introduced uh, in february 21 9 february 21 guideline of networking by the institute of course the next step to the associate and networking associate is still we have done nothing except referral networking is we started working together then the next step was always merger and of course the merger of various ca firms was always thought of as the right way of laterally growing now you can you can merge and become very big and many firms have done that many firms have merged or they have got newer partners after merger and become larger and larger in this country and therefore they are able to pitch for much better work in this uh, particular uh, i mean wherever the work is from government or other agencies because their size is large and they are capable of handling several things as chairman said Uh, 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 at one place now coming to this concept of merger still merger is a uh, is is little difficult because one thing is you you should have a full trust 
first partnership you have with one person or two persons, uh, you have a you have a full trust because they may be your friends, they may be acquainted with you for a very long time. So you have no problem with the ethics, etc. Now, if you merge, then you may have several issues, etc. So we can think of those issues also. But merger was thought of one of the ways of growing, and many people are using. Now, their merger is actually having a problem in the profession because of two things. One is name, as whose name will be used by the merge firm. And second is how the profit will be shared of the existing work before merger. And how, because once you merge, it will become just a percentage or a remuneration percentage. So it was an issue. These issues had to be solved. Now, of course, what we are doing as a next step to this, now next stage is MDP. That is multidisciplinary partnership. This is the this is where I am taking persons other than chartered accountant as my partners. Originally, this was never thought of. That whether because our act itself said that I need to have a chartered accountant as a partner. Now thereafter, now the concept is that in order to grow, it is beyond the networking and beyond the merger. I need other professionals with me uh, who would add value to the my clients and uh, to the client's work and therefore the concept was started as MDP that is a multidisciplinary partnership was thought of as a concept. Now this concept of multidisciplinary partnership would reduce cost and increase revenue because there are many professionals coming together and it will increase revenue. It will be actually a one-stop shop approach to problem solving and this one-stop shop approach would obviously be acceptable or will be appreciated by the business community that if you go to this firm all the work that the person that we want to do can be done at one place and therefore i need not run after several professionals having a problem of running after several professionals is they may have different opinions and to get them together is very difficult as for the for the for the client so instead of that if you have one firm which where the partners themselves will discuss among themselves and get the problem solved of all. Suppose you have income tax, GST and audit uh, done there as, as well as consultancy valuation and, uh, and various other things done there, company law matters, so many things. And then, or even legal matters. And then uh, obviously preparation of documents, preparation of agreement, everything is coming together. The client is very safe because the partners would discuss among themselves and then decide what is the common approach or the best approach possible for the for the client that is why this concept of multidisciplinary partnership has been thought of not only by our institute but others also around us other institutes and together we want to grow now let us go to our presentation of today where i like to share the screen and make the presentation to you and you listen to me before I start the presentation, I'm telling you that first I present what is a multidisciplinary partnership, how it can be formed, and then I will go to many, many issues that you may have in mind about MDP, that is multidisciplinary partnership. And if you are still left with any question, I will request you to put them in, in the either in the chat box or in the question answer. So you, I think we will go it at the end. You listen to this lecture fully before you really feel that you have any additional questions that are um, that are still in your mind. So let us now, uh, let me share the screen and uh, let us go to the presentation. Uh, so let us see why we need MDP. One, one, the many of the general things I've explained. Now there is a huge complexity of business. The complexity of business has increased many fold, not only in India, but also everywhere in the world. Now, second part is we have high reliance on technology. Not only that, that is the government and business organizations are using technology, including data analytics, but we also need specialists in our firms and our um, uh, you know, area of practice who know data analytics or blockchain or artificial intelligence and so many things because this is a thing of a future and I need such kind of specialists because Everything that government is asking us to do, even in right from filing to the assessments to the appeals, is in, is based on technology. And this reliance on technology would need me need various uh, the the persons of various uh, expertise 
so the seniors may not be as expert in in technology as much as a younger partner may be and together they can create a very good firm now coming to the other reason why we need mdps there are very very complex financial reporting now for example there can be ifrs or us gap or whatever you think of it it this reporting is required to be cat, to cater to the complex supply chains or complex ownership structure or complex transactions that are happening now all this results into complex accounting and it need, need again it re results again into complex financial reporting now with all that we need a larger group of people who would handle that now coming to the other things that there are new products new services being introduced new financial in, in, uh, instruments are continuously emerging this requires a very very diverse skill base to handle such product services and financial instruments in our either accounting or in consultancy that needs a larger base a bigger uh, a, a, a multiple multidisciplinary partnership uh, uh, to deal with that you can have you need a creation of bandwidth this creation of bandwidth is to develop the skill the expertise Uh, the and the consistency that is needed for quality audits and higher level consultancy quality in audit is a big challenge institute is trying its best to have say a accounting standard board auditing standard board internal audit standard board telling us about an ethical standard board telling us about how to do the work uh, what is to be done how it is to be done etc and therefore we we and when we have a peer review board and quality review boards uh, and the uh, uh, you know a financial reporting review boards uh, reviewing our work for quality and we are also now in jaipur the um, the uh, the quality review organization which uh, institute has set up um, uh, so all this still needs lot of creation of bandwidth to develop the skill and expertise for quality audits and also for the <clears throat> the consultancy the higher level consultancy so that's why we have mdp as a concept now friends let us see what is mdp in practice in definition if we come to definition objective uh, an objective of this mdp now friends multidisciplinary partnership firm of chartered accountant which will be called in in short form as mdp cas ca smallest so multidisciplinary partnership firm of chartered accountants or mdp cas in practice means a firm which is approved in its name under the regulation 53 b read with regulation 190 under the under the c act so this is the definition which is a firm approved as such in its name now we'll see how the name and all comes coming to the objective of this particular multidisciplinary partnership is to enter into partnership with members of other professional bodies so otherwise also you have a merger as i say you can have a networking or a merger of chartered accountancy firms proprietors or chartered accountant themselves or with their firms having merger or having in the network but if you want to do the partnership with other professional bodies the only way to do it is through multidisciplinary partnership firms now this particular guidelines that institute has given as i said the networking guideline came in february 21 the new guidelines these guidelines are effective from 8 july 21 friends who can be partners uh, under regulation 53b tells us that there can be other professionals who are partners with us and they are company secretaries who are members of icsi cost accountants who are members of icwa advocates who are members of bar council but here i'll i'll tell you that bar council of india rule 1975 have not been amended and therefore advocates as on date cannot be a partner Uh, in mdp as on date we, even though under our act it, the under 53b regulation it is allowed it may be allowed after bar council accepts that request now coming to that other partners that we can have is engineer one is engineer who is a member of institute of engineers or engineer of any university or any institution recognized by law can be a, a partner in a, a multidisciplinary partnership an architect who is a member of indian institute of architect an actuary who is a, a member of institute of actuaries of india who does not hold a secret a, a certificate of practice 
because uh, actually the Institute of Actuaries says that if he holds a certificate of practice, he cannot be a partner other than with other actuary. So person who is a member but does not hold a certificate of practice of the Institute of Actuaries can become a member in multidisciplinary partnership. Now, who cannot be a member? Now, you, you know that I told you that the partners are only those who are members of the institute as prescribed in Regulation 53, 53B. Now, 53A and B, A gives a list of institute, B, B gives the persons who, who are, 53B gives the persons who are, who can be a member, who can be a member of MDP. Now, the, who cannot be there for a member, who is, who, the, the, those professions which are not listed in Regulation 53A or B. Now then, if 53B is, who is not covered there? So this is, these are the question asked, whether a MBA, a postgraduate qualification management is MBA. So whether an MBA can be a part of uh, MDP, no. Now, approved valuer, no. Now, approved insolvency professional, no. And information technology professional, no, because they are not included in 53B. But I'll tell you that all these people can be CAs also. So CA can get additional degree as MBA. CA can be a valuer. CA can be insolvency professional. CA can be information technology professional. For example, he can be DSA of our institute or CSA internationally. Now all these people, if they are CAs, can be a member. But why, if they are not CAs, then all these, all of them, can, all none of these people can be a member. So this is a, a prohibition of becoming a partner. Now coming to the forms that we can use, like, you know, we are talking of multidisciplinary partnership. A partnership has two forms, as you are aware. Partnership form under Indian Partnership Act. This is one form which all of us use and have, have been using for ages from the time the institute started. Uh, uh, functioning in India 1949. And now here, the other form is obviously LLP, which was Limited Liability Partnership Act, which was of 2008, uh, is, uh, is, is one more possibility of uh, we forming and limited liability partnership, uh, even in our CA practice, which is also a form available for multidisciplinary partnership forms. So both the forms are available and we call them multidisciplinary partnerships. So only these two forms are to be used by us. Now coming to this, you may be uh, very curious to know as to how we register this, assuming that we have some friends or we know some of the professionals who are extremely capable and who can be our partners and you are also uh, very uh, uh, comfortable with them, with their ethics and with their way of behavior, with the way they work, if you're all comfortable. Now you want to know that I know some of these people who you, whom you listed as, you know, as company secretaries or cost accountants or engineers or architects or actually not in practice. So I know all of them and I want them to be my partner so that I have such kind of work, which is, uh, which probably I will be able to execute properly. Then, you know, you want to know the registration card. Now here, the registration of, first of all, this, if you want to form a multidisciplinary partnership, that is called MDPCAs, as I say, the registration is absolutely mandatory. Otherwise, we cannot practice in that form. So registration is mandatory with individual institutes. So we are talking only of the Institute of Chartered Accountant in this uh, lecture that we will be, that this registration of chartered accountants, MDPCA will be registered by the CA Institute, ICI, and therefore that registration with this particular institute is mandatory for all chartered accountants. Uh, <clears throat> now, you once you decide to have a registration, first thing is we should file Form 117. It is an application <clears throat> for trade name. You know, this is regulation 190, which asks us to take a trade name. Now this trade name um, is the, all the rules regulation is same as regulation 190, which says that uh, you can use your first name, you can use the surname of partner, you can use the combination of the first letter of the, of the name uh, uh, as, as uh, the, you know, as a name of the firm, similar, the, there are rules for firm where the name of God or a goddess or a deity is not allowed unless it is the name of a partner. For example, if you 
uh, want to use Ram or you want to use uh, whatever Vishnu, you want to use anything like Shiva, then your the name should be in the name of the partner. Otherwise, this name as a god, goddess or deity is not allowed under 190 and description of descriptive trade name is never allowed even under uh, regulation 190 and name which is smacks publicity is also not allowed. If everything fails like you tried various names and nothing is working, then you may not, many those who are listening to me may not know that even a family member's name can be allowed. Family member is father, mother, brother and sister and spouse. Their names can also be or their letters can also be used in rare cases where your name is just not available or just not acceptable. So all this is, but it's very, very rare. But otherwise, all these regulation 190 are applicable to MDP also, MDPCS also. Now, you know, Form 18, all of us have filed Form 18, giving various uh, details about partnership, address, name of the partners, etc. That you are already aware. Now, coming to the next one is, uh, you know, here, the to distinguish a firm of chartered accountants with the multidisciplinary partnership firm, the registration number which institute will allow will have an abbreviation MDP as so that you are distinguished as, as MDP. And once your name, name is approved and your, you file the form 18 and your partnership, you know, MDP starts working, you need to use a suffix multidisciplinary partnership firm of chartered accountants in practice. You know, normally on, on the card or in our CA form, we say practicing chartered accountant. We write below our name. Instead of practicing chartered accountant, we'll write multidisciplinary partnership firm of chartered accountants in practice as, as one of the necessity of and use MDP in our, in our abbreviation. Coming to this particular thing, the, there is a certificate required to be issued by the practicing CA. For what? But person is a practicing CA, but he should not be connected with this particular multidisciplinary partnership. If he should not be connected, he is a person who is certifying something. What is certifying? First is he is certifying truth and validity of the certificate of membership of the prescribed professional bodies or degree of all of recognized university to be certified. So what is to be certified that suppose he's an engineer and he is a, um, uh, he, he is a recognized university giving him this degree of as engineer. So that, that certificate of membership or if he's a company secretary is, is, is whatever, whatever the person is actually, you need to see that there is a, he is, he, truth means he is that person who has, and he has a valid certificate of membership that he holds. Secondly, the Valid membership, uh, valid membership of professional bodies by partners means that it should be valid on the date of partnership. Suppose you have got this certificate many years back or some years back, but today it is not valid. Like in our case also, to become a partner in, as a CA, obviously you need a membership number and COP. This is to be certified by the chartered accountant who is not connected with MD for all practical purposes. Now coming to the services to be rendered by MDP. Now services to be rendered by MDP, all the services which are prescribed in section two, subsection two, that is read with regulation 190A, are the services allowed. Now regulation 190A talks of practice of accountancy. You can do a practice of accountancy, but you know that in addition, 190 also talks about various other services which are allowed by the council uh, of ICI, which are tax audit, bank audit, or cooperative audits, etc. These services or income tax practice of uh, uh, up to tribunal level uh, or GST practice or previous service act practice, all those which are allowed are also allowed to MDP. So this is one of the things we should remember. Now services, there is one more thing about MDP. The services allowed to be rendered by other professional or respective institute can also be done by MDP. So actually, I cannot practice as a cost accountant, for example. But if I have a cost accountant as a partner, he, I can do give some services as a uh, uh, of costing. Now you know you should know that individual institute like ICAW or ICSI have barred their members from doing audits under those acts unless they are in majority. 
So unless you have a cost accountant in majority in MDP, you cannot do a cost audit or you cannot do a secretarial audit unless all CS are in majority. But otherwise, the other work which that allowed by the, for example, they are also allowed to represent in ROC. They are allowed to represent ROF. They are allowed to all of them do internal audit. All those which are allowed under those acts, which are allowed to those members, can also be done as a. Uh, for internal audit, we don't need, uh, you know, a number as, as you know, uh, more numbers. So all this, you have to remember that this MDP concept adds a lot of work to the uh, firm, which otherwise would not have been done by the firm. Now, audits under Companies Act. No audits under Companies Act can also be done because uh, by a firm, you know, of a CA firm. Even MDP can do it if the majority partners are chartered accountant. This is section 141, subsection 1 of the Companies Act 2013, which says if the audit can be allotted to a chartered accountant in practice under CA Act, Chartered Accountant Act, or to a firm where majority of the partners of that firm is a CA. So already that MDP concept is there in 2013. Now this is section 141, 1, uh, subsection 1. Now you know the now the after the LLP Act came into force, now the now the companies can allot audit even to the uh, to the to an LLP, the Limited Liability Partnership Firm. But the section 141, subsection 2 of the Companies Act 2013 says that if LLP is, a, is an auditor, then only CA partner can sign the uh, sign the accounts of a particular company. Now, this is 141 subsection 2. And you know, our institute does not allow any audit, set of audit to be taken up until there is a majority of majority partners are CS. Now, coming to this particular concept, you will be saying majority is very easy, right? I have seven partners, CA, and two partners who are others, or three partners who are other professional. I am in majority. Or I will say that I am a proprietor who has joined MDP who is having 80% share and I have five other persons, five say CA, CA, I mean CS, ICWA, actuary, etc. And I have this engineers and all, and they are four, five, six, seven. I am one, but I have 80% share. Therefore, this is MDPCA. Now, this concept is not the same way as we understand. To conduct, first of all, to conduct an audit of financial statement, you know that you need majority partners. This is number. This is share number. So if I want to take an audit, I need majority partners in number as a CA. That is under act. But this particular guideline of MDP tells us something different. Now, this guideline of MDP says that we need to have a majority on both number of partners and aggregate share in profit. So when institute says that you can accept audit if you are in majority is not purely by number. I gave you an example of a number where we were more in number, say we were five, six, seven, and they were only three. But suppose the aggregate share of profit of three is more than these seven, the aggregate share of profit. I, I say that all the share of profit is added here, uh, and the other than C and to the CA. If our seven people started who are, who are having say 49%, and 51% to those three who are there as other professional because they are valuers, they earn more and are, there are other people who are there and actuaries and they say ours is a very professional job and we will earn much more than you and we need higher percentage and you agree to that. And with all that, if you are not in majority as far as share of profit is concerned, then you are not allowed, you are not a majority, your majority criteria is not fulfilled as far as ICI is concerned. They are doing this because it can be also an LLP where there is a huge number of partners and LLP has a limited liability. Therefore, they said that for that purposes, considering the CA as a partnership or CA as, uh, I mean, MDP as a partnership firm or an LLP, uh, the institute felt that majority criteria to be clearly established by, uh, by CAs, they should be more in number as well as the aggregate share in profit should be more than 50% uh, 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 of all the partners together. This is extremely important. I would like you to see the original guidelines, but otherwise you may have questions around this. And therefore, I'm telling you in advance that you consider majority criteria before you accept any audit. Now, there are other aspects of MDP and there are several other aspects that you can consider. One is the ceiling limit. One question was asked about MDP 
multidisciplinary partnership is the ceiling limit for company audits to be calculated how they can be calculated the institute has given uh, you know where uh, the, that the it should be calculated only on ca partners for example if the ca firm having 10 partners and what is the limit the limit is under section 141 subsection 3 subsection g so 141 3g is that our companies act 2013 places a limit of 20 companies per partner or per chartered accountant on the firms but in this 20 companies of course the recent amendment suggests that one person company small company and private company having share capital share capital less than 100 crore are exempted are, are not counted in 20 so other than this one person company or a small company or private company having share capital less than 100 crore other than that i can do only 20 audits but this 20 audits per partner now for that only i have to see the calculate this limit on practicing chartered accountant only now first of all audit cannot be done unless i am in majority majority criteria is both number and the share the uh, aggregate share of profit and in addition to that the limit will be calculated only on the number of cs now coming to various other things uh, you may have question on this particular uh, particular multidisciplinary partnership may have seen several professionals are coming together and they may discuss for for their future as to there can be several other than share of profit they can discuss several other things for example administration who will be administrative head or if there are branches who will be heading those branches who will be in management who whether there is a management committee management committee that should be there of different professionals or some of them now who will have which functions responsibility so if you say there is a cost work will always be headed by a cost accountant or uh, if you have one and if you in the company law work it will be headed by company secretary if you have one so such functional responsibilities can be written or can be decided in advance similarly who has the power to sign for example the bank accounts whether all have all and several uh, or joint whether any above a particular figure if there should be joint responsibility all these powers who who is authorized to take decision about say new investment in in the infrastructure or many other in, many other things about the particular issues that may come up with government authorities uh, there may be issues relating to um, you know uh, assessment so who has a duty what are the duties who has a duty to face the outside world for example in case of assessment of the firm etc or uh, various institute asking some questions etc then what are the rights of the partners what are the rights what he can ask from other partners and what are his responsibilities that what he has to deliver and what right he has to ask from others and that can be question that can be discussed there can be liabilities as to if the liability comes on a for a particular work then who is responsible for that can be is is can be discussed then dispute resolution see if there are dispute in partner on all these matters which i said right from share of profit or um, administration management or responsibilities powers duties etc or liabilities how to solve the dispute who will solve the dispute who will appoint the arbitrator whether it is the arbitration act or will go for civil suit which is a which is a city or a country in which this will happen now all these things will have to be stated in the agreement which is made for mdp this is all mutually agreed no act which supports mdp whether ca act cs act icw act none of them talk of all this this are all to be decided purely by members themselves and this is to be um, uh, this is to be properly drafted like you draft llp agreement so nicely all chartered accountants help the client in drafting llp agreement we should also because we cannot draft agreement lawyers uh, say that we are not authorized so we only support or help drafting the agreement to the to our clients and therefore this llp agreement also even though we are making ourselves uh between us we need to be very very cautious and careful while making this agreement it can uh, uh, otherwise create lot of issues at a later date some of the other questions that are asked about the reconstitution now there can be reconstitution due to admission now admission can be of any of those authorized yeah, under 53b all any one of the authorized person who can join mdp can be added anyone wants to retire and start his practice can go off or you can have a Uh, there can be unfortunate incidents like death so all this is to be informed in form 18 in 30 days by whom by the continuing partners so who is responsible not a partner who left 
or not the partner who got admitted uh, uh, or he retired, somebody retired, then the persons who are continuing need to file the form 18 uh, and within 30 days and inform the change to Institute of Chartered Accountant. This is normal. We do it even for our CFOs. Now, coming to the council permission. Now, you know, there is a question asked by many of us that whether, and you know, we there is a section 27 of the uh, our CA Act. 27 subsection 1 has a proviso. Uh, so actually, 27 subsection 1 says that any branch of a chartered accountancy, uh, chartered accountant partnership firm should be headed by a chartered accountant who is a member of the institute, not chartered accountant in practice. So even I have an employee uh, who is a chartered accountant and head a branch, but I need to give an address I can, uh, of the branch and I need to give a person who is in charge of the branch and automatically his professional address is shifted to the branch. Suppose I am in Mumbai and Pune branch, if I am a, I am a partner in charge of Pune branch, my professional address shifts to Pune. This is what is the current position. Same is the position as far as the uh, MDP is concerned. But you can have an MDP, there is a very peculiar case that you want, suppose you feel more work of company sec secretary work will come in Pune. So you want the company secretary from Pune to be your partner as well as heading that branch of Pune. Now that is not possible normally under section 27, but under 27, one has a proviso which allows, which uh, has a power given to the council to exempt a CA firm from having only CA member in charge of branch office. So the council has decided that if any of the MDP asks for a permission uh, to, to get this, uh, to have a non-chartered accountant, of course, the person should be allowed to be a part of MDP under 53B. Uh, but if he is, then he can be a, in charge of a branch of, a, of, the, of, the, of the firm. If requested to, so you, if you want somebody else, you need to request to the council that you allow us to have, say, actuary, or you allow us to have an engineer to be heading whatever you want, and then council will look at the whole scenario and say that yes, we are allowing you to do this. So you have to justify that. But once you justify, council has a power, and council has decided to use this power in favor of MDP. Now coming to Regulation 192, you will have to say what fees for professional services can be charged. Now, you know our regulation 192 that fees based on percentage basis is not allowed to a chartered accountant. This is the same rule for MDP. We are not allowed. Now, you will say we are valuers, we have others, uh, engineers, and they are doing work, so what happened? But even say regulation 192 says many of the things on which a fee can be charged on percentage basis. I don't know how many of you have gone through 192 to find out that that, for example, a receiver or a liquidator can have a percentage fee on realization or disbursement. It is possible under Section 19, Regulation 192 itself. For example, cooperative society, you are doing bank, cooperative bank. Now, you can charge either on paid up capital or working capital based on the regulation of the state or regulation of the central, wherever you are doing multi-state multi cooperative or a, uh, or a single state cooperative. Now, you can decide whatever is the rule and you can still charge percentage. Now, cooperative bank audit, as a central auditor, you can charge percentage of working capital. This is what is, and um, it is what is stated there in the, in the act itself. So, you can charge. So, it is allowed. So, in the 192 regulation doesn't stop that. Valuer for the purpose of direct tax and duties can charge percentage. Fundraising activities can also, if it is a part of the work, then also there is a percentage, 1% of fundraise is a fee. Then also debt recovery services, uh, amount of debt recovered um, on that, there is a fee to be charged or cost optimization fee. So if you say, or you can have the cost optimization or a fraud finding, so you, your fee is just a small percentage of that cost optimization. So you have saved 100 rupees, you may get 2 rupees or 5 rupees or that. So depending, that is a calculation, the way the fee is calculated. So this is allowed under 182. So first, as a rule, no percentage basis is allowed. But however, I can tell you that this is possible under some of the circumstances, some of the scenarios. Another question that is asked is whether I can do other business or occupation. Not business means not in the sense of uh, doing a business because CA in practice cannot do that. But whatever other occupations are part, whether I can go for part-time employment. 
Now here again, there are two sections, to, two regulations to be seen by us, which are same as CA for the CA uh, profession or a CA firm, which are applicable to MDP also. Now coming to 190A, 190A says CA in practice shall not engage in any business or occupation other than profession of accountancy unless permitted by the council. So very simple. Either you ask for permission of the council or be in accountancy profession. Now, what is 191? Section uh, regulation 191 talks of the, the occupation or part-time employment some in addition to being in full-time practice. So they, we are allowed to say uh, being a professor, for example, or uh, teaching in classes, etc. So here, what is that particular part-time employment uh, of a CA in practice? Uh, he may accept what? So it says this particular section 191 says, notwithstanding whatever is stated in 198A, 198A says that it is, you can do only the practice or of that profession of accountancy only, notwithstanding anything stated here in 198A, 191 allows us <coughs> to say that subject to council, control of council, of course, the council will have some regulations, a CA in practice may act as what it can act as in addition to being in full-time practice as a practitioner CA. He can act as liquidator, trustee, executor, administrator, arbitrator, receiver, advisor, or representative for costing financial and taxation matter, or may take up an appointment, uh, an appointment made by a central government or appointment made by state government or appointment made by court of law or any other legal authority or may act as a secretary in his professional capacity. But there is a prohibition to accept a full-time employment on salary basis in all these areas. If you are full-time on salary basis, this is not allowed, but if you are not full-time on salary basis, in addition to your practice, all these things are allowed under section, under um, uh, regulation one. Now, if they, so you have to see this particular thing it is so wide and so, uh, you know, comprehensive that MDP can work in uh, also like a CFM, MDP can work in various areas. Now, of course, you will ask the question on professional address, professional address. We have a regulation 187. It says that if you are in a, a proprietor then or the uh, office is in your own cha, you can uh, have your own address as professional address is, uh, uh, will be the address of the person in charge or the person I have told you in the branch. Uh, he can be another member can be a charge of that other branch. If you are an employee of a CA firm, then uh, your professional address is of the employer by definition, employer. And if you are employed CA, if you are an employed CA outside the CA firm, then you can give any address. You can give address of a, uh, either of the your employer or you can give address of your house or residence or temporary residence. So that is allowed to see as employed outside CA firm. In a CA firm, if you are employed, then professional address of the principal of, a, uh, of the employer, CA employer is your address. Now coming to the change, of course, all these need to be notified in 30 days. All these regulation 187, 187 applies to MDP also. Coming to the disciplinary proceedings, now disciplinary proceedings, if at all there are major errors and omissions which we do, there will be disciplinary proceeding by various authorities. Now, you know, NFRA can do the disciplinary proceeding, even uh, uh, our client can do a disciplinary proceeding, etc. So all these disciplinary proceedings would be handled by individual uh, institute providing the certificate to the partner. Of course, engineers, there is no institute unless Institute of Engineers is a member. So he is covered under civil law, engineer. Otherwise, individual institutes, and we have talked of various institutes to start with uh, when we were saying who can be our partners. So in case of company secretary, ICI will look into disciplinary, ICW will look for cost accountant, or um, uh, in uh, Indian Institute of Architect will look for architect, or uh, Institute of uh, Actuary will look at uh, this uh, particular uh, a disciplinary mechanism uh, if it is against that particular person. Now, coming to the next part of this uh, questions, there can be several issues in your mind and I will quickly take some of the issues. One is that whether I can form a company. For example, why this question has come? Because a chartered accountant 
can form chartered accountants together can form a consultancy company you know the institute has allowed us to go in the corporate form of practice so we are asked whether mdp can be formed as company we stated in the beginning i stated that you can be either a, in, a partnership under indian partnership act or you can be limited liability partnership under limited liability partnership act now <clears throat> whether you can be a company no you cannot be a company mdp cannot be a company and you know by definition even uh, llp which is having company as a partner cannot take up audits even under the current companies act you can, if it is an llp audit can be given to an llp of chartered accountants but if this llp has company as a partner in any case that is called a company itself that llp will be treated as a company and therefore it cannot be mdp so multidisciplinary partnership to be formed as llp cannot have company as a partner obviously by definition what we heard so far it is not but there is a question asked that whether we can form a company all mdp uh, partners can form a company the answer is no <clears throat> then second question is partners in mdp whether they practice in individual name now as you know suppose i am a partner in one firm and they allow me uh, to become a partner in another firm or they allow me to practice in my individual name also there are several such cases in our country where a chartered accountant is proprietor also partner somewhere else even though the marks are not counted by the government for giving marks to the firm but still to uh, use his expertise um, they people they, they they ask a particular proprietor a firm may ask him to be a partner so the question was whether mdp you can have an in partner you can practice in individual name as a chartered accountant the answer is yes if agreement permits or if agreement doesn't prohibit so agreement therefore i told you the agreement is extremely important if you don't want your partners to do individual practice you should prohibit them saying that no you all your partners uh, you all your uh, practice will be merged in mdp and we will here we will decide what is the share of profit what is your remuneration based on what practice you were doing and what you will do in future but i we will not allow your individual practice so agreement should prohibit but there is no prohibition in agreement then you can do it or if it is specifically permitted by the agreement also you can do it obviously now coming to the next question is whether i need a permission of other professional body to take a member of other professional body in mdp for example a company secretary or a cost accountant or an uh, actually who is not in uh, having a certified practice etc i told you the condition now all those people whether they need individual they need to go back to their individual uh, uh, professional body and say that they need permission to join a mdp cas the answer is no you don't need permission under any of the uh, uh, in, under our act uh, to uh, ask uh, even under the other acts if you see the changes made by cs um uh, to the regulation uh, and the icw act you don't need such permission they have never said that you to join either mdp of cost accountant or mdp of cs or mdp of cs you need permission of individual institute for the anyone to join so this was another question asked and uh, uh, therefore this is answered here now coming to the next question that was asked whether uh, i can become a partner in another firm in practice and uh, i can do other permitted you know other employment i gave you the whole list of uh, various things that i can become for example i told you know we can become executor arbitrator receiver advisor etc uh, etc et we had a very big list of things that we can do so the question asked is whether a ca partner of mdp in practice can become partner in another firm or engage in such kind of other occupation or be in part time employment of other organization answer is yes if only permitted by the partnership deal. or not prohibited by we can also say that line in addition so be sure if you don't want your partners to be partner in other firms or engage in other occupation as we said uh, previously or being in part time employment with any other organization please write that in the partnership if, if the deed llp or partnership deed you make on an mdp no proviso to clause 3 regulation allows profit sharing now question was asked as to how we can do mdp because our act does not allow the institute of uh, our act does not allow for sharing of profit with non members the act says that you can share your profits only with the pract other practicing cs 
Now, is it so? No. Proviso to clause three of part one of CA regulation allows profit sharing or other arrangement, including commission on brokerage and fees with the profit members of professional bodies mentioned in 53A. Friends, what is 53A? 53A regulation talks of the institutions whose members are allowed. The same like ICSI, ICWA, etc. You know, the Institute of Engineers. So all this is given in 53A. If you your profit sharing is allowed with these institutions only, which are listed in 53A, and we listed the professionals in 53B who can be partners in MBP. So this question is solved, saying that whether it is allowed to share, yes, it is allowed to share with only these professionals in addition to CS, if I form MDP. So it is allowed that I can form MDP and share all these you know, profits, etc. with them otherwise. So this is even other, otherwise it is allowed with these people uh, in the, in the uh, under C Act. Now coming to this. Now next issue that is asked to uh, generally to the institute is, now suppose the there were only two CA partners and uh, uh, other two, three partners of other. And then if uh, all the CAs either get DCs or they retire or resign and they cease to be a, a partner there. Then whether it will remain as MDPCA, no. At least one member should be there in the MDPCA. If you are in majority, you can do audits. Otherwise, you can still work in MDPCA. But MDPCAs, are to be, we need to be in majority CAs in MDPCAs. But at least you need one CA. If everybody retires or get DCs or resigns, then it, is, it ceases to be MDPCAs under the particular regulation. Now, coming to the other question that is asked as to what is the liability of the each partner. Now, each partner's liability will be as per the legislation under which you register, whether under Partition Act or LLP Act will decide liability of partners. Now, coming to the next question about the existing CA firm can be converted in MDP, means you have a running partnership, now you want to take other professionals as partners, which you cannot do in your CA firm. So what you do, you form an MDP or a new one, but the problem there will be that your legacy is lost. So you want to convert what we call a conversion. Now, even though you convert, you can convert your existing firm and your seniority, etc. will remain. But the question was asked whether my FRN will remain the same. No. FRN cannot remain the same because I told you in the beginning that MDP, we need to have a prefix and we also need to have a particular name. In the name, we need to add the, the words. So we need to have MDP in the registration number and we need to write multidisciplinary partnership form of chartered accountant in practice at the end. So we will have a new FRN. So if you ask me whether you will have a new FRN, yes, but your legacy can be continued. You can convert. Otherwise, there is no question of conversion. If this legacy was not there, then conversion is not right word. Otherwise, it is always forming a new MD. Now, coming to the next question, which we have to deal with is whether we can, we are, we can go for various empanelment. Because if you see the empanelment currently is of a CA, of a CA firm or an LLP under the act is, is registered. And of course, as I say, under Companies Act, an LLP with majority of the CA partners can be allowed audits also. So there we have the empanelment done by the Institute of Chartered Accountant. Every year we file a form with the, we are eagerly awaiting form in July or August issue of the Institute. And we go for that empanelment, multi uh, uh, empanelment form uh, for various uh, things that we can get empaneled. Then the institute does a huge exercise, some 45, 40, 45,000 firms and proprietors would register there. Then we send it to RBI and many other regulators, NABAD and so many things we do it. The question was whether MDP is eligible for employment with various agencies. Yes, it is in par with any LLP or uh, uh, partnership firm of a CA in practice. So it, uh, this is also eligible. Now, networking, whether it is allowed for MDP CAs in practice, yes. Even networking is allowed. So we talked of networking and what is networking, etc. We share our resources, we share our technology, we share our um, various, uh, in addition to profit and loss, we share our uh, common practices, uh, uh, you know, good, good practices we share, we share a brand name. All that is networking and such networking network and MDPCA in practice can also join. 
So this question was asked to the institute whether networking uh, we can do in the inner network whether MDP can be added. Yes, MDP or MDP CS can be added in a network. Now we have several guidelines. So are you able to flout the guidelines or are you able to circumvent the guidelines or bypass the guidelines? Answer is no. When it is MDP or CAs, MDP CA will have to follow all guidelines of ICA on various issues, including whether you can advertise, how you can advertise. There are guidelines on uh, your website guidelines are there. We have guidelines on how visiting card can be printed and what should be written on visiting card. All those guidelines are applicable to MDP CAs in practice also. And if you go to other, you know, if CAs are less and other institute members are more like CS and ICWA members, etc. They are also similar provisions exist. So it is not possible that I am in minority or I, I join a firm where such regulations are not there. Every, every institute has uh, a very tight regulations about advertisements and websites and cards and, uh, you know, publicity in newspaper, etc. And therefore, all those need to be read. In short, the ethical standards that we have in our institute would apply to MDP also, or MDPCAs also. You should now start learning the phrase MDPCAs. And MDPCAs in practice is the, is the place to be used. So this phrase MDPCAs in practice, all the guidelines of the institute regarding every matter on ethics would be applicable to this MDPCAs also. We cannot flout that. It is only given as a, as a facility to us to go all out and see that, you know, get our horizon expanded substantially under this particular uh, provision so that we can work for, for our client as one stop shop, as I say, and all services can be given uh, very efficiently and without any, uh, uh, you know, uh, friction between various uh, uh, professionals about the opinion on a particular case. So this for that, but otherwise the regulation rules are the same and we, we will have to keep our pos posture, we will have to keep our standards, we will have to keep our poise in all the cases here that, uh, that, that we will be dealing as professionals to the outside world and uh, when professional they should say that yes he has the ethics he has the uh, standards that high level of standards that each of the institute uh, expects the members to comply with are also complied by mdpcs so this particular thing has to be kept in mind and this is not an instrument to flout any rules whatever whether networking rules or website rules or advertisement rules or otherwise they are only to make progress as a professional keeping all high standards in place so this is where i will request you to look at coming to the last issues that i have uh, that mdpcs in practice will require to comply what all the provisions and act and rules and regulation of all the professional bodies so if if suppose other professional body say something beyond ca regulation says or the icwa says something beyond cs and ca regulation say then even that will have to be practiced by mdp because mdp to allow the other members to join individual uh, the bodies, professional bodies may think of additional restrictions. If they think of additional, uh, you know, concessions, they may or may not be availed because they should be allowed by other, to the other professionals also. Unless they are allowed to the other professionals, obviously uh, you cannot do it. But if there are restrictions put by any professional body, who are uh, who the person of that body is my member, then those restrictions in the act rules and regulation would also apply to me. So you, if you are having MDP of CS uh, with other partners, you should see the other rules, regulation and, uh, and uh, rules, uh, acts, rule and regulation also, because you may be otherwise caught unaware that what they are not allowed to do, then our partner also cannot do it. Uh, we cannot also do it because it is prohibited under those acts or regulation. Now, the last question that we have is whether all partners of MDPCS in practice or firm are responsible for the misconduct of a partner. Now, friends, there are two types of liabilities can come. One is a financial liability. Another is 
क्रिमिनल लायबिलिटी आणि ऑलवेज यु नो अंडर सी एक्ट और एनी इव्हन सिव्हिल लॉ ऑफ क्रिमिनल लॉ दी लायबिलिटी फायनान्शियल लायबिलिटी इज टू बी पेड बाय द फॉर्म इन ऍडिशन टू द पार्टनर मे मे हॅव टू बी पेड बाय द फॉर्म इफ द पार्टनर डझंट हॅव इनफ मीन्स टू पे हिज लायबिलिटी uh you can have an agreement saying if there is a mistake and a liability comes he is responsible but he may not have the means to pay so the firm will have to pay right in case of partnership firms in llp we say that our liability is restricted to the share capital that we have financial liability that is why it is called limited liability partnership now coming to this in case of mdp cas in practice for any error or a misconduct of a partner the other partners are not responsible that is what the regulations say neither the other partners nor the nor the firm mdpcs is responsible for the errors and misconduct you know this is a similar provision that is in the in our act our ethics also that if there is a disciplinary it is against a particular partner or not it or it is against a person who has given advice it is not against the whole firm or all the other partners and a person who is uh, punished or uh, uh, by way of financial penalty or uh, by suspension of certificate etc is only on a person similar provisions are there in the guidelines for of partners of mdpcs that for misconduct of a partner neither the firm nor the mdpcs in practice are is responsible i will here like you to tell you one more thing that recent amendment which the institute uh, or way all the institutes have asked from the government to the mca who is our parent body we have asked for amendments to our ca professor ca act and those amendments have been accepted are that we will we can even punish the firm in future if majority number of partners of the firm are found guilty of professional misconduct so suppose there is a firm of five partners and three or more partners are found to be involved in a particular fraud or uh, negligence or uh, misconduct then even the firm can be punished by the by the ca institute or other institutes now these kind of amendments have been proposed Uh, otherwise we were always saying that individual is responsible yes here also individuals are responsible but the firm uh, there was no action against firm and i would like to tell you that there was action by cb against a firm in india saying that they are under common control etc common brand name etc so all of them are one and all of them are band together that is how cb said similar thing can happen for an mdpca in case of misconduct if majority of the partners of the mdpca is practice are found to be irresponsible and uh, or uh, they are involved in uh, hand in gloves with management for various uh, wrong things that are done so this is additionally even though the original regulation doesn't talk about it uh, since the, there is a recent amendment to the ca act uh, on this uh, you know, which was proposed by institute and then therefore i am stating that the ca mdp ca in practice need to be cautious that that majority of the partners or or substantial number of partners or partners who are having majority stakes are not caught in on the wrong foot the, otherwise the whole firm will suffer maybe it can be banned from practice for a particular period or it can be banned from doing a particular service suppose your audit is found to be deficient then you probably cannot take up audit like nfra is uh, giving such or even cnag has been giving such kind of uh, uh, you know judgments saying that a firm is banned for two years firm is banned for one year from doing any audit of public uh, listed companies or banks or particular insurance companies or mutual funds and so specifically the regulators are saying against the cf firms even though they misconduct or the mistake or negligence is of a partner uh so when they are convinced that a firm cannot uh, is not having the right kind of um, structure to do the right kind of work quality work so this this risk is also in mdpca even though the regulation says a partner himself is responsible for this friend this was my presentation on mdp i hope you liked it i know it is supposed to be for 2 hours but it is a small subject i tried to give you every type of uh, this thing that you had i find one question here which i'll answer before we go ahead uh, sunil junjun wala i say sir we are informed that institute of companies have not yet come out with guidelines and therefore they cannot be formed now is it true they have not come out with guidelines yes but our institute has taken a stand 
that you don't need such a permission. They have already got the CS, CS Act amended. In fact, our institute, if you see the commentary, says that amendment was itself was not required. The original CS, CS, ICWA Acts are, have enough powers and uh, everything with the ins respective institute to regulate MDP. In spite of that, now they have uh, amended their act to allow MDP. So now that is not the case. And you don't need permission of CS Institute for getting a CS on that. Now, if he is afraid and if he wants to go to his institute and register himself, it's different. But he is a part of MDP CS. Suppose I have three CS and one company secretary. It is MDP CS. Now, MDP CS can always take a partner of the of their persons who are listed in 53B. So there is no problem absolutely in having that kind of this. Uh, we will have another question. If CS partner incorporates company, can MDPCA be appointed as statutory auditor? If he incorporates a company for his own, suppose you are allowing him to practice in his individual name or be a part of another partnership firm. And like our CA firm is allowing only CS to have a corporate form of practice. So CS may allow their own CS members to have a corporate form of practice. But if your MDP, LLP agreement or a partnership agreement allows, first of all, him to be a partner of other firm uh, of CS and, or CR or ICW, and then in turn, he gets permission from the institute, then we cannot probably um, uh, argue against that. Um, uh, now, that is that is where the, the thing is. Uh, Pinky, just wait until I complete uh, the, some of the questions. Now, in chat box, we have one thing. Can a MDP... Uh, can have branch outside India. Now, friends, we cannot, as a CA institute also, is, see, we have no control on any branches or any work done outside India. So even CA institute is not allowed branches uh, all over the world. We are not allowed the registration of branches. Similarly, if the same rules and regulations apply, obviously this question I also had in mind, but I don't find CA institute allowing branches uh, abroad. Uh, even though some of the firms I knew had branches in Dubai in the past and they were registered under that particular uh, um, uh, UAE Act and uh, they had a register open for other people from other countries coming and practicing there. So our institute had in that sense had allowed, our institute is quite liberal. If it is allowed, our CAs are allowed to practice in any other country as a CA then our institute has allowed the branches, otherwise no. Whether MDP can add the person who are outside India, again, same thing, we can add. But problem is the, the institute, the respective institute may not allow him to practice from outside India. You need His address needs to be in India to register. You cannot have an address of US and then practice in India. So that's a problem. If he's permanent resident there or he, is, well, he has gone for work, you know, always my partner can be in, employment, but part-time employment. He cannot be in full-time. I explained that several part-time jobs are possible, but not for full-time salary. So if he is going there for that work, that's fine. So he's not actually a person from outside India because he's not in employment. If he's from India, he goes out for work, his own work, and we are allowed him to do that. He can be, but otherwise a person who is in outside India obviously uh, cannot be our uh, our partner. Uh, now, sir, uh, sir, I think I think yeah. you now, want now you to say that if yeah, now you can ask no, no. all questions sir, in the list. <laughs> no, no, I think uh, we want to ask that whether the CPA of Australia or CPA of uh, USA whether we can uh, make a MDP with them. No, because I told you who can be a partner under MDP. Company secretary under company secretary's acts, ICW under ICW act, an engineer under any of the recognized university, actuary, uh, architect. I told you, you know, and bar council has not allowed the the the, uh, the lawyers. So he cannot be even today partner. Beyond that, 53B and 53A, section 7, 53A mentions the institution with, with whom I can do MDP. And I can even share my profits, etc. And 53B tells me the, the names like company secretary, you know, the, chart, the, uh, the cost accountant like that. So these people who are members of other institute, they are not part of our uh, part of, uh, you know, this list of approved universities or this. For example, we can have a mutual. I know where the question comes from. We have a mutual recognition agreement, say, with UK or with Australia. And I did that work. Similarly, other person did a CA in India, you know, that person and got a membership, then I can take him because he's a member of the institute. Then probably the question was whether he still stays in Australia, I can do it. 
if he is a member of the institute, we should take a permission of the institute specifically saying, even though he stays in Australia, he has now under mutual recognition agreement, you should allow this. Otherwise, where is the question of, you know, having mutual recognition agreement? This question was not discussed in the council, but you can always ask that if you are allowing mutual recognition, I can be a member of other institutes in the world and they can be member of my institute from there. Why a person should not be allowed? But again, setting a branch he can become, suppose institute allows us him to become a partner. Now again, you will say, now I want branch in UK, USA and other places, uh, which might be a question to be discussed in the council. So this additional question can be put up to council as a part of this particular, uh, you know, um, uh, discussion that uh, we are having. Uh, yeah, another question has come, Pinky, I hope that uh, you got the answer. Uh, sir, can we you throw more light on permission required by CF firm to have branch in Dubai? <laughs> now it is not possible. They have, I, I, I learned that they have closed the register long, long, long back. Many of the firms in India and other parts of the country uh, have gone there and registered. I, I, as far as I know, they are no, not adding any names, but if they're adding any names, you can add your name uh, with the institute permission that I am allowed to add my name. Institute is liberal. As I say, if you are allowed to see, you should be allowed to practice as a chartered accountant in that country. If that country is allowing you to practice, they are allowing you to be a part of that register. You know, your firm is listed, registered as a branch. Fine, you can ask the institute that I want to open branch because Dubai is allowing now, but UAE whole is not allowing, but Dubai as a state is allowing. Fine. Then you can ask the institute and open a branch, which was done by some of the old CA firms I know had branches in Dubai those days. But now since the register is probably was closed in between, then there is no new firm that is getting added. What is happening is those who had branches, they are adding, adding partners and sending them there for work. But otherwise, there is nothing new that is coming. Now, another question is, sir, since concept of independence of auditor or certifying professional is always at stake, how can coexist and safeguard? Can you please give some example? Now I'm saying, telling you first, I told you that you cannot accept audit, especially statutory audit. Internal audits, okay, they can be done even by non-charters under the Companies Act. So we are talking of those statutory audits which a firm will do. Now what is a certifying professional? Now I told you that again, the guidelines themselves say that a professional himself is responsible for all misconduct or mistake or omissions personally, and I told you that the firm is not responsible and other partners are not responsible. So always form an LLP. So if at all, it comes something, some financial penalty comes beyond the assets of that partner, at least you are safe. You're only the share capital is at stake, nothing beyond. You can also have, you know, our institute also support this, our uh, committee for members in practice gives indemnity insurance uh, for um, CAs in practice. Na? Our practice uh, indemnity insurance is available. Take that for your LLP or large CFM. All large CFMs in this country have because there can be any financial penalty which your personal assets would be attached. Many firms are not getting converted to LLP in India because of they are holding the real estate and real estate, their offices are in the name of the firm. The problem is that they will have to pay a huge time duty to convert into LLP. So they are still in the firm. But all of them have taken professional indemnity insurance of either of the through the institute, which is allowed only up to three crore. They have taken personal, I mean, um, directly going to the um, to the various, uh, um, you know, uh, this uh, insurance agency, insurance company, they have taken their insurance. So um, that that is still possible. So it can coexist. It is safeguard. First of all, the person himself is responsible. If I am doing costing and a cost accountant signs, he is responsible. If I am doing audit as a CI, I am responsible. Why cost accountant and company secretary or my partners are not? So it can coexist, and there are safeguards under each. And my disciplinary can be done only by my institute. Disciplinary of CS would be done only by CS. So you are safeguarded. Why? Because there are other CS or other cost accountants or other CA who are looking into the disciplinary. So they know what errors can happen. They know the whole job. It cannot be that, you know, it's a safeguard in a sense that disciplinary can also be done by the same institute. It's a safeguard in a sense because you know the, the profession well. Those members are supposed to know the profession well. So they would be easily able to handle those things. So I think the independence of the auditor is uh, safeguarded and uh, certifying professional, uh, he himself, he, he himself exposes himself, even in our CFM. 
only that professional who signs exposes himself to the regulators and in addition of course a person who is a quality partner or people who are actually in audit who are professionals are responsible not article clerks so in, in even in our case we ask who are, who are the chartered accountants on audit similarly here we'll say that if it was a combined work uh, now cs institute said you cannot do the audit as a cs that is a certification as a cs if it is not um, uh, mdp cs in practice for example then in any case there is a question of certifying and being at risk what he is helping me is to say minutes he will prepare minutes for me he will attend various agms he will make uh, all the documentation for companies uh, on on company law matters or even nclt he can help me in doing that he will not actually sign any certificate as a cs so there is it is i think we can coexist there are safeguards and i will get much more quality output much more uh, quality result much more quality opinions for the for the client because we are together and whatever suppose i am a company secretary but suppose i was only a ca i may not have read companies act or cb act so much like the companies so if i am going wrong the person will correct me my partner will say that no this is under cb act cannot be done this cannot be done under the companies act if i am only in income tax practice or gst now you know we are in fact safeguarded if such such way therefore we can coexist the answer is yes it is a better form of practice for as far as earning is concerned as far as the uh, uh, as far as sharing of cost is concerned and as far as getting the right kind of blend of professionals to give a one stop shop service it's one of the finest way that is thought by the institute of chartered accountant and accepted by all other institutions uh, except of course bar council they, they, if that is that is there then then it will be i mean many people want lawyers as their partners but uh, unfortunately they don't want the bar council doesn't want cs to be in uh, in a uh, in a practice of law that is their basic uh, thing that is that's what they are not allowing but that's a different thing our act allows and uh, therefore uh, we, we can be there so it we can coexist and there are enough safeguards is the answer that is uh, that is uh, that is to the question that is asked i think any other question i have missed uh, concern no i think we have no other questions uh, that you are know, no, that one I'm one asked. question is there okay, yeah. sir, can a ca allowed as a lecturer by council enter into mdp or any additional permission required see permission to have you want to say he is a lecturer right now first of all he can hold a cop full time cop that is his cop can be held if he is a lecturer for less than 25 hours so that you already know or in a week so if he is following that law he is a practicing full time ca right even though he is a professor in a college or a class or whatever he he can always or a personal teacher you know he is going to some houses and teaching some of the students all that is allowed up to 25 hours a week under our law so he is still a full time practitioner once he is a full time practitioner he can be a part of mdp the mdp of cs can be made by any full time practitioner so i am i am complying with the definition i am ip professional i am the valuer i am suppose i am allowed under my act to do certain thing but not beyond a particular number of hours in a in a week if i follow all that obviously uh, i am allowed to be then i am in full time practice moment i am in full time practice i can be a part of mdp is the answer to the question that is asked i don't find sir any... one question yeah. sir one question from my side if you allow Huh. <laughs> sir i i heard many times uh, now also that there is a part time uh, cop hmm. so what the there is, uh, what what is the question exi- exactly on part time <laughs> cop <laughs> no i just want to know that what the meaning of part time cop nowadays whether he can certify whether he can sign the audit report or no, i'll i'll tell you i'll tell you there is no concept in ca institute as part time cop you know there yeah, is yeah that's why you are you are holding a cop you are a cop holder now you are barred from doing something if you are doing say for example i am doing teaching of 30 hours a week then i am barred from being a i am not treated as in full time practice as a ca right moment i am not in full time practice as a ca then what is a penalty given to me one is i can't accept any audits under any law number one and obviously i cannot do the certification work so anything what a full time uh, uh, person does so my i cannot generate a udin itself i will not be able to able to generate a udin so what is a penalty to me I, i since i can't generate a udin i can neither sign a certificate nor a 
statutory audit, right? I cannot do that. And therefore, I, 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 as a practitioner, I can do say representation to um, uh, income tax, representation uh, under the law, any other, you know, GST, whatever else. I can continue doing that. I can go to ROC and represent somebody. So those things are possible, but certification is not possible. What is the second? No certification and no audit reports. What is the second um, uh, impediment? I cannot take articles. Articles are not allowed unless you are in full-time practicing CA. Otherwise, what will happen? 90% of my time goes in my employment. I have only 10% for my practice and I take 10 articles. Now, what they will do? They won't be getting the right kind of, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, the education with me or experience with me. So we, I'm barred. If I can do, suppose a, a, a professor, I'm professor for three hours or four hours in a college in a day and I come back to my firm, then of course I can take articles, I can teach them, I can do work through them. And so I am barred from taking articles if I am a so-called part-time, the phrase that part-time practitioner. And secondly, I cannot sign anything. Here are the two impediments and because of UDIN, you are automatically blocked. Previously, you, some other people may not have known. Say your client will not know that you are a part-time practitioner. So the problem was solved by UDIN. Once a UDIN cannot be taken, the banker will ask you in, your client will ask you in, and therefore you cannot so you cannot sign automatically. You are you are barred from doing that. But still, representations can be done. There are possibility that you can still do many other things. But articles and such signatures cannot be done by somebody who is in part-time practice. Obviously, he cannot be a part of MDP. MDP needs full-time practicing CS or other professionals who are who can do uh, full-time work with us. Full yeah, time means again, as I say, 24 hours. I, I, I told I, tell you again, full time means less than 24 hours. You can do other activities. Yes. Anything else? Yeah, I was supposed to ask that on, only. Key. My yeah. second question was that key, whether he can be a uh, part time COP holder, can be a partner in. He cannot be, no, obviously, be because he is not MDP. allowed to practice only. If you really see, and similar provisions exist in other acts also. They are also saying that you should be, you know, giving attention to your practice. If you are not able to give attention to your practice, don't do it. So, I mean, that is, of course, you can do some part of the practice, only representations, etc., but not the audits and other things require much more time and updation, which probably uh, they are not even those professional firms, I mean, professional institutions are not allowed. So, that is one. I think we have answered mostly all the questions yeah. that were there, and I hope that those who attended got some value addition from this. Uh, so, I request you to close uh, if uh, there are no questions. <laughs> Yeah, sir. So it's our pleasure to hear you because you are uh, giving all the answer in so deep and so lucid in so lucid manner that our all doubt will be clear. Uh, all the doubt cleared. And uh, MDP is uh, right now also a very uh, complicated subject. I can say you are saying that it's a very simple and you can cover in one hour because you are master in that. <laughs> but, I was a part of formation of these guidelines. Yeah, yeah, you are, you are. But uh, I think I explained it uh, point by point. This uh, this particular presentation I think is uploaded on website. So our website, you are also a member RCM. So if they are uploaded, they can always have a, a view it. And you know, if anybody wants to. Sir, we can we can view. We can we can't hear you. <laughs> I think you can always record it and uh, put it like ICI has started doing this. They are recording all the lectures and putting it on ICI TV. So yes, I think yes. we can also start that. We can record these kind of, you know, special lectures. Even lectures on a, a, a tax and uh, say GST would be uh, happening every week. So that person can attend again. But there are all subjects like this where very few persons currently may be interested. For example, if you start talking on auditing standard, only 20 people would attend. But I think if it is available on the net, at least 200 people can access it later on. Or if it is available on YouTube, it can be accessed by 2,000 people also later on to understand the subject that is stated here. So this was one of the initiative we can start in WRC also with the permission of the speaker, you can record. And in addition to the PPT, you can write because PPT is only points for discussion. Yes, it is not yes. an essay to be written. Many people write essay yeah. and I don't like that. Yeah, that, that, that I went yeah. want to say. When you read the essay, <laughs> you can always be a reader. Uh, you need not be a speaker. But in any case, uh, you are right that we should record and then we put up two things together as a video, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, which can be, which is we have immense use 
to those who could not attend for some reason or you have decided after a year to uh, form mdp that time you have no guidance so which is available uh, that somebody is speaking because these are all subjects and this will not you know get modified very often these provisions so it's easy that you can always refer to a, it's not in income tax and gst this is available you need to have a speaker within uh, who has spoken on the subject in last 90 days otherwise it may not be relevant but uh, for such kind of subjects we can always or an auditing standard accounting standard we can always listen to a speaker after long time also so such things can at least be selectively recorded and kept on the website with the permission of the speaker and that will help the profession a lot. So your your suggestion is right. Right. <laughs> yeah. thank, and I think we have you, met sir. so many times in Jebinagar, where you lead Jebinagar discussions uh, so many yes, times. Yes, yes. Uh, and is, we have met many times there. Yeah. So yeah, continue yeah. it is always very pleasure for me to hear you. When to the, when they told me that faculty is Srinivas Joshi ji and you have to give a word of thanks, then I happily agreed for that. But it's <laughs> because I, I uh, and uh, all the participants are very much, I think all the participants uh, now can form MDP without any uh, difficulties and uh, any uh, problem or queries because uh, all the query has been solved by the Srinivas ji and they uh, itself uh, presented all this subject in very, very much lucid manner. So there is no any scope of any uh, technical diffic uh, difficulty, I can say, per se. So uh, on behalf of WIRC and on behalf of all the participants, I want to thank you, sir, uh, for uh, nice guidance. And uh, it's very nice to listen to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And we'll meet yes. again. Thank you. Thanks yes, a lot. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Good day to all of you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.